Hello, I'm Jim Carter and I play Mr. Carson in Downton Abbey. And I'm Phyllis Logan and I play Mrs. Hughes. Have you not seen Downton Abbey yet? Or perhaps you need a refresher? We meet the Crawley family and their domestic staff at Downton Abbey the day after the Titanic has sunk. The news hits Robert Crawley, the Earl of Grantham and his wife Cora especially hard since their eldest daughter, Lady Mary, was expected to wed her second cousin who just went down with the ship. The marriage would have kept the estate in the family as Downton must go to a male heir. Whoever marries her will be a lucky man. He will not, however, be me. And as you can see, no male heirs, lots of girls, the least complicated member of the family being Lord Grantham's loyal dog, Pharaoh. Fortunately, Lady Mary easily attracts suitors. But when the ridiculously handsome Mr. Pamuk seduces her and ends up dead in her bed from an apparent heart attack... A scandal of such magnitude it will never be forgotten. Well, it's Lady's maid Anna and Lady Grantham who help cover up the indiscretion, thus protecting Mary's reputation. Enter the dashing Matthew Crawley, the new heir. Another distant cousin and not very aristocratic, but a working lawyer. After much back and forth, the Great War, not to mention Matthew's fiancée, Lavinia, keeping them apart, Mary and Matthew finally profess their love. And what a proposal it is. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Yes. But at Downton Abbey, joy and sadness go together like tea and crumpets. Hours after Mary gives birth to the new heir of Downton, Matthew is killed in a motor car accident. Downstairs, the kind-hearted housekeeper, Mrs. Hughes, played by me, keeps all the female staff in line, while Mr. Carson, the butler, keeps all the men in line. At least in theory. Head cook, Mrs. Patmore, is very hard to control. She runs her kitchen like a tight ship, constantly scolding poor Daisy, the kitchen maid, especially when Daisy has the nerve to introduce modern technology. It's a mixer. Embracing the future seems to be a challenge for many at Downton Abbey. Mosley, our favourite valet, sees the writing on the wall. Large estates cutting back on staff, the working class rising, so he jumps ship when offered a teaching position at the nearby school. Well done, Mr Mosley. Anna and Mr Bates, the valet, have instant chemistry. Which at Downton means watch out, iceberg ahead. Mr Bates gets charged for murdering his first wife, receives the death sentence, but is thankfully exonerated at the last minute. Phew, Anna and Bates get married and it's all very romantic, for a while, until Anna is raped by Mr Green, the footman of a Downton visitor. Mr Green later ends up dead and Anna's arrested for murder. It's never plain sailing for Bates and Anna, but just know Anna does get off. They end up all right and even have a baby. The women of Downton Abbey, upstairs and downstairs, do not suffer fools gladly. Violet Crawley, matriarch of the Crawley family, loves getting the last word in, and it's usually a zinger. How you hate to be wrong. I wouldn't know. I'm not familiar with the sensation. Her favourite sparring partner is Matthew Crawley's mother, the middle-class former nurse, Isabel. These two disagree on almost everything which gives Downton some of its biggest laughs. What have I done wrong now? Oh, please. But deep down, the two respect each other, and when Isabel's kept from her companion, Lord Merton, by his two nasty, no-good children... What did you imagine? That we would welcome you with open arms? It's Violet who steps in with some choice words, saving the day. And why have you stayed away? She didn't stay away. She was denied entry. Mrs Crawley wants to take you away from your son and your family and kidnap you into marriage. How perfectly marvellous. And who can argue with that? Now back upstairs, Lady Sybil's storyline, not such a happy ending, I'm afraid. The youngest and most spirited of the family... I'll run away, I warn you. ...falls for the family chauffeur, socialist-minded Tom Branson. And before you can say cricket, the two are off to Ireland fighting for their shared causes. When they return, Sybil's pregnant and all seems well. In a shocking turn of events, just after giving birth to a healthy girl, 
Sybil succumbs to eclampsia and dies leaving poor Tom with a baby daughter, Sibby, and a family who barely puts up with him. But Tom's a fighter, also a stand-up guy, eventually winning everyone over, even snooty Mary. Lesson there, never underestimate a chauffeur. And we've waited this long to bring up footman Thomas Barrow for a reason. He's complicated. When he comes to Downton... Thomas! Mr Barrow to you. He's the most despicable, lying piece of... I'm sorry, but the man would sell his own grandmother down the Thames. And when he and dastardly ladies maid O'Brien team up, no one's safe. But, in his defence, as a gay man living in 1920s England, having to keep that secret to avoid arrest would, I think, make anyone a bit uptight, don't you? I went to London for pills and injections. The purpose of which was? To change me. To make me more like other people. Of all the characters at Downton, Barrows had one of the greatest transformations. Second chances indeed. Somewhere he found a soul, and when Mr Carson had to step down from his duties as a butler, Barrow stepped in. I don't want to force your hand, Mr Barrow. And I don't want to twist your arm, Mr Carson. My only fear is the position will go to his head and he'll revert back to his old ways. Let's pray not. Now, if you're wondering if Mrs Hughes and Mr Carson, after spending years together strictly as colleagues, found love, well, of course they did. Are you daft? Did you not see their hand holding on the beach? If not, look here. Honestly, that writing was on the wall. Life at Downton Abbey is all about second chances. Take Lady Edith, the middle daughter, who's always lived in Lady Mary's shadow. And not content with ruining your own life, you're determined to ruin mine. She finds love, or thinks she does, in the older Sir Anthony Strallon. But when he dumps her at the altar, what? Yes, worst timing ever, Lady Edith has a mini breakdown, then hears feminism knocking at the castle doors. She gets a job writing a newspaper column, and before you know it has fallen for her publisher, who's sadly married to a mental patient, and as per 1920s law, can't divorce her. He travels to Germany to try to get out of it, and ends up being killed by Hitler's stormtroopers, and wait for it, Lady Edith discovers she's carrying the publisher's child. Well, there's a jam. Her aunt, Lady Rosamond, the only one who knows, encourages her to give the baby up for adoption in Switzerland to avoid scandal. She does, then abruptly changes her mind, placing baby Marigold with an adoptive family on the estate, allowing her to visit her in secret. Well, of course, that doesn't go down well. The truth eventually blows up in her face, but wait, all is not lost. Just when she needs it the most, Edith inherits a boatload of money from the dead publisher, takes Marigold back, her family accepts the situation. I believe we should offer little Marigold a home here. Well, then, uh, I suppose that's settled. And she finds love with a country land agent, Bertie Pelham. Well, I think we've come to the end. Oh, no, 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 wait, Lady Mary. Well, what do you think? Of course she found love again with the dashing, motor-racing Henry Talbot. And when Lord Crawley had a near-fatal health crisis, it was clear to all except him that he needed to step down. So Lady Mary and Tom Branson now manage the estate. Oh, and Lady Cora has taken on a new position as hospital president. Me? Why? Which at first irked Lord Grantham and his old-fashioned ways, but there's no denying how good she is, and he knows quite well holding back any woman in his family is futile. Everyone is healthy and happy at the moment. Let's all hold our breaths. Now, as for the future of Downton Abbey, as it soars into a new era, no one knows for sure. But through wars, pandemics and bankruptcies, as well as small celebrations to grand pageantries, the house still stands proudly. And as the family grows and the staff come and go, it's your guess as good as ours. What could happen next? <laughs>